By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks. And today we have a mail day. Just a small one, I think. Uh, it's mail from the Netherlands here. You can see it. The cards are over there. So we're just going to open it up. Obviously, it's old school. Let's see. Oh, it doesn't want to open yet. Got to cut it a little deeper, it seems. Let's have a look. Ooh. Little package. And I think this, um, this mail day includes a cobalt and one of the more expensive cobalts actually oh here we can already see one of the cards this is a card from revised because as most of you know already i'm trying to collect actually uh, expand my revised collection i'm trying to collect all the cards uh times four uh, with the exception of the restricted cards. So Balance, Wheel of Fortune, I'm just going to collect them once. I just have them once. And this is a simulacrum. And what does it do? It's uh, one block and one. It's an instant. And it reads, all damage done to you so far uh, this turn is instead re retroactively applied to one of your creatures in play, even if there's uh, more than enough damage to kill the creature, you don't suffer any of it. Further damage this turn is treated normally. Right? So that's pretty nice. And I think that I see an autograph there. And let's just have a look. I'm just going to take these cards one at a time. Let's have a look here. I'm not sure if this is a proper autograph, actually. It doesn't look like the Mark Pool. Or does it? Maybe the... It looks a little bit different. Let me know in the comments below. This doesn't really look... I mean, oh, it does look like pool. It's P-O-O-L. It is the pool one. It's the older one with the um, with the ballpoint pen. Like he uses different ones nowadays, but this is the older one. Okay, that's really nice. That's neat. Happy. That's that's good for my revised collection. I'm, I'm a huge revised collector. Um, so let's see, another one, bam, and oh yeah, Disharmony, this is an Italian Disharmony, and I was actually looking at a Cobalt that I just, you know, like I just said, and he had this Disharmony in his collection, and yeah, it was pretty affordable Italian, so I thought, why not, let's just, uh, let's get the card. What Disharmony does is, when your opponent attacks, you can play Disharmony for one red and two, it's an instant. And then you can take over one of his creatures and then untap. So you can basically, let's say you have a scenario where he attacks with uh, with an Urnum Jinn and I don't know, um, another Urnum Jinn, just two Urnum Jinns. I can play my Disharmony. I can take over one of his Urnum Jinns and then use that to block the other Urnum Jinn. And of course, the ideal situation would be if you could block two creatures that eventually kill each other. Uh, for example, he's going to attack with a Sarah Angel and a Surrender Befreet, and then you play this one and you take over the, um, I guess in this case, you would take over the Sarah Angel or the Surrender, but it doesn't really matter for the outcome. And then you would block and you would lose a creature and you wouldn't take any damage. Now, at the end of turn, uh, the creature that you took with the, this Harmony is going to go back to the original owner. So you're not going to keep it, you know, then the card would be really overpowered. Uh, but it's a nice card. It's a nice card for some combat surprises. So this Harmony, Italian one, and a Witch Hunter, also an Italian one. Very cool card from the dark. It's actually uh, an uncommon three or one. I always mix those up, but it's basically it's a rare. She didn't have any rares in the dark. Uh, but when you're an, an uncommon at a certain level, it has kind of has the same print run as, as rares. So Witch Hunter, two white and two to cast, and you can tap it and it can deal one damage to an opponent. And you can also pay two white and one, and then it can return target creature. And I believe, uh, but I have to think about this. I believe it's target creature you don't control. Um, 
Yeah, return target creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand. That's what it can do for two white and one. So it's, it's kind of a weird uh, ability for a white creature to have. But I think it's a really cool card. And as you can see, I don't mind having foreign cards. I actually have a whole binder full of foreign cards. I enjoy building decks that are completely like consist out of Italian cards, for example. And the next one, Inferno, also an Italian one. And Inferno, of course, the instant from uh, the dark for two red and five, it deals six damage to everything. So it is really an Inferno. So nice, there's some Italian cards here. That's pretty sweet. Uh, let's have a look, what do we have in here? And here, this, this is actually the card, what it was all about. Cobalt Overlord. Now, Cobalt Overlord gives all your Cobalts first strike. And for some reason, Cobalt Overlord is a pretty expensive Cobalt. I actually paid four euros for this. And you're probably wondering why, why would he do this? Well, it's actually the last Italian Cobalt that I needed for my collection. So I'll, I'll show you my collection in a moment, uh, but I'm really happy to own this because now I've got all the Cobalts in Italian and I can make an Italian Cobalt deck and maybe I'm just gonna play this one in there as well, who knows. And look at this, we still got four cards to go. These are not sleeved, so I guess they're not as valuable. Ah, four spike. Four spike, it's just a really nice card. I saw it in a match not too long ago, and especially early game, this is such a strong card. For one blue, you can counter target spell unless your opponent pays one. Now obviously, in the early game, it's really useful. In the late game, not so much because your opponent is, is not going to tap out. On the other hand, it does happen from time to time where your opponent casts something and, for example, keeps mana mana up to play a counter spell or keeps mana up to play a disenchant or a swords or a shatter. And then if you have four spike, it's an easy way to protect whatever you're going to cast. So it's a it's a useful card. And I now have a full play set of four spikes. Oh, I actually thought this was a four spike as well because I think I ordered two. But now I'm not sure. But this is a shatter storm. This is another card. Uh, for my um, for my revised collection, it's in really good good shape. Shatter Sh Storm originally comes uh, from the Antiquities expansion, also Mark Pool art, by the way, just like the uh, Simulacrum, also Mark Pool. And all artifacts in play are buried when you play this one out. Two red and two. I think the reason that this card doesn't see more play because it's just so powerful um, is because of Mishra's Factory. That for me personally, that's my biggest problem with this card. It doesn't take care of the Mistress Factory. So then I'd rather play with Shatter than with a Shatter Storm. And of course, Shatter Storm is a sorcery and Shatter is an instant. And that's why it's really difficult to use Shatter Storm if you want to destroy Mistress Factories. But useful card. And I think it's my third copy. And here we've got Goblin Balloon Brigade. Nice, happy with this one because I, to my surprise, I didn't own a Goblin <laughs> Balloon Brigade that was in a decent condition. So I'm happy to have one that's now in a in a decent condition. And here we go. Turn it around. Bam! Personal Incarnation. Now this card is so cool. Three white and three to cast. And here you can see the wizard casting the Personal Incarnation onto the battlefield. And this is an avatar, one of the first avatars in the game. Maybe the first avatar in the game, actually. I know that Hand of Justice is also a summon avatar, for example. Um, but I wonder, there are probably others, but I, I I don't know them right now. Maybe you can let me know in the comments what the other avatars are in old school magic, at least. Uh, let's take a look what this card do does. It's a 6-6 six, six for 6, which is pretty decent in old school. And it reads, Coster can redirect any or all damage done to personal incarnation to self instead. The source of the damage is unchanged. If personal incarnation goes to the graveyard, caster loses half of his or her remaining life points rounding up the loss. Now, this is the big problem of this card, that second part. If personal incarnation goes to the graveyard, you, you lose half of your life. That's insane. So if I play this and somebody plays, I don't know, a terror on it, I just lose half my life. That's just ridiculous. If it wouldn't have had the other half, like the that you lose half your life, but just only the first part where you can reflect any or all damage, and it's a choice, 
then it would actually be kind of an interesting card to play. But because of that second half, this card is really close to unplayable. Maybe I'm thinking if you use it, for example, with a card like Juxtapose, where you give it to your opponent and then you kill it, that would be a really complicated way of halving somebody's life total. But yeah, I mean, uh, that could kind of work. Let me know if you think that Personal Incarnation is somehow playable and how you play it. I mean, 6-6 six, six for 6 is decent. And it's definitely hard to kill through combat damage or direct damage because you can just take part of the damage on your own life total. But the problem that I have with this card is what if somebody terrors it or you know what, just taps it with an icy and kills it with a royal. Or anyway, there are so many different ways of killing a creature. Uh, and then you lose half of your life. It's really like half of your life. Anyway, still a beautiful card, really cool art. Really, I really like uh, with the old school art, a lot of old school art just has the wizard in the art. And I, I just, I always like that because this is basically us. This is us, the players, we the players who are being uh, portrayed in, in the art here, which I think is really sweet. Um, and let's see, who's the artist? Oh, interesting. Kef Brockschmidt. I don't think I know a lot of art from this artist. So that's quite interesting. Okay, well, this was the mail day of today. Thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we open old school magic mail. And uh, yeah, boom, here we go. So a lot of interesting cards, very diverse. And uh, yeah, really happy with it. Thank you for watching. And if you want to support the channel, um, you've already done it actually by watching this video, but you can leave a like. Uh, you can leave a comment to this video, uh, subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet, if you want to, of course, uh, but that really helps the channel. So if you're considering it, please do it because it really helps the channel grow. Talking about helping the channel, you can also become a sponsor of Timmy Talks and you can do that through Patreon. So there's probably a link popping up right now. Click on the link that will take you to Patreon, um, the, to the Patreon page, I, I should say, of, of Timmy Talks and you can consider becoming a patron of the channel and it already starts with just one dollar a month talking about patrons let's take a look at the end scroll let's take a look at the fantastic amazing patrons of timmy talks Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomaar gezien.